Good morning, sisters and brothers in Christ. Greetings in the name of our Lord, the risen Lord, our Savior. Welcome to our celebration of the third Sunday of Resurrection, the fourth Sunday of April. Sunday to thank God and reflect upon His goodness and love for all of us. Especially this morning as we welcome our pastors, our leader, our choir, and reflect upon the first witnesses of Christ's resurrection, the women, as the center of reflection and meditation this morning. Uh, let us welcome everyone who are here, those who have come for the first time, and about mga first timer po from other places who are here this morning. Wala naman, but uh, I would like to uh, recognize Brother Sunny Boy Ambo from uh, UCCP Mabuhay, Little Baguio, uh, Malita, Dabao Occidental, uh, nasa likod. Uh, Brother Sunny Boy, welcome sa atong pagsimba. Not really his first time. Tuli, ingon siya, six months na daw siya during. But he went to the office this morning for our uh, discussion, sharing, and future partnership to the area, uh, including those areas. Let's all stand as we greet one another the greetings of love and peace. With the love of the Lord. <clears throat> oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you in the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. Yes, I love you in the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. Yes, I love you in the love of the Lord. The Lord's love and peace and grace be upon us all today as we come to Him in celebration and worship. Today is an important day for our church council, for our third regular church council meeting after the service. So we just remind the members of the council, especially on the important item about the nominations of the uh, nominees, nominations of the nominees, which we <laughs> uh, schedule actually. The election is scheduled on May 14, the second Sunday of May. So this afternoon, oh, one major uh, topic would be the approval of the Nominees by the nomination committee. And of course, the report of the pastors. Uh, this year, by uh, October, we will be celebrating 120th church anniversary. And as uh, we have practiced, and you have practiced and approved by the church council, every five years would be a grand celebration. So this year would be a grand celebration as it is 120th. So we look forward for all of these meetings and concerns and preparations. And there is one, if there is one update that we would like you to consider, is the um, 120th anniversary song composition competition. So it's all printed in the first page of our guide. Please uh, read through all of that. And for all of those who will be interested to participate, please... Uh, uh, connect and look for our music director, Erica Panotes, to, for more of the details on this concern. Salamat po na you will be participating. UCCP Para Lang Pag-asa is uh, now accepting enrollees for 2023 to 2024. And we invite the members of the church the children of the pastors, children of the Levitical family, the pastors from other churches to even uh, enroll because there are a percentage of discounts given to 
um, our children. Not just about the discounts, it's about our uh, support to the continuing ministry of Paralang Pag-asa as the oldest kindergarten school of Davao City and our own elementary school. We thank you for all your prayers and support for the Roof the Roof project. As of this time, we have already received 1.3 million pesos of offerings and support for this um, project. In other words, yung kulang natin is 2.2 million na lang. Uh, alamat po, gamay na lang kayo. Di ba? Kayang kaya. Especially that uh, we are also excited about the next project. Uh, the joy, di ba? We are excited of the next project. Yung nakita natin dito, so sa harap, yung during the Holy Week. So siguro, adong paspasan ni eh, para kato ang sunod. <laughs> Otherwise, um, um, ubertikan, basig malain ang roof. <laughs> so, not unless, uh, like, my ninang or my ninong would say, ako nalay palit atong, kuan, uh, 1.9, ako nalay palit atong, para di natang mahula itong pila pa. So, let's pray about this. Huwag mabuta nag dali, Jod. We are uh, dependent on the provision of the Lord. In his time. Thank you for all your support. The uh, schedules for the ministry is also printed there, especially for this month. Uh, the CF will, will have their first uh, organizational, um, I mean, as far as the organization is concerned, it will be the first uh, retreat for this uh, month and also on May. So, CF will have their retreat. On the April 30 to May 1, not 29 to 30. No, April 30 to May 1, uh, they will leave 1 o'clock after the afternoon next Sunday and overnight at uh, the whole day of May 1, which is holiday, which is Monday. And this will be at um, Purakan uh, Residence or Vacation House, General Louis Purakan uh, Vacation House at Balotakai Bansalan. Now, for all of those CF who are interested of this retreat, just contact our pastor Edith as in charge of the CF. We thank the uh, Basolo family, Lao family, Ventura family for the offering of flowers this morning. We continue to invite you to um, participate in the ministry of teaching. And we need ministers, volunteers for uh, teaching ministry. Uh, please contact your pastor and the Board of Christian Educator uh, if you are now ready to commit yourself on this work. We continue to thank God for his provision for all of our needs especially the financial uh, requirements and support that we need to have for this ecclesiastical year. Uh, as we all know, the ecclesiastical year will end on May 30. And another ecclesiastical year starts starting June 1. So we are now in the last month of this ecclesiastical year. And as far as financial budget and support is concerned, uh, we thank the Lord for His provision. And we pray continue, continually that the Lord will provide us even in the next ecclesiastical year. Thank God for all his support. We continue to ask you to continue to pray for those, our loved ones and friends that need prayer, especially for healing. And also, uh, please include in prayer the families, the bereaved families, as a member of their family, family has uh, passed away, uh, especially last week. The Manatad family, who is the Lola of Joy and Hazel Toleran, and also the mother of the Toleran, of course, and of course, Adan Manatad, who is our contact at uh, Matina Biao. Their mother, Nanay Kura, is... Uh, Actually, uh, uh, 
Uh, it's now, yung wake niya is actually at the chapel this time. Yung mga pumasok kanina through the gate, kita natin yung uh, wake. And services are continuing until tonight. Tomorrow will be the necrological service. Also, uh, pray for the Montilio, uh, Montilio family. Jonathan Montilio. Who died at the stage? Who died at the stage? Uh, who died at the stage and uh, his remains was uh, brought to the Philippines and was uh, actually um, uh, laid at the Masonic Center for four days. Services were conducted also until tonight. Uh, the burial will also be on the other day. Also, uh, let's pray for the Tolon family. As we uh, also uh, pray for the family, for the passing on to a wonderful life, to our dear Nanay Elvera Viring Tolon. Uh, if you remember, before the pandemic, we have this young, uh, young this old nanay, Makayo old siguro. Uh, even during our time, when I was here at the first term, uh, she was always in the entrance, greeting everyone from 6 o'clock in the morning service until 6 o'clock in the evening. So, grab it to siya. Uh, if you remember, Nana is already 90 years old. Uh, we were not able to visit her, actually, because she didn't want to be uh, disturbed sa iyang kahimtang until we learned last th Wednesday of uh, her journey back to the Creator. Tonight will be the first service for Nana Biring, and uh, hopefully as is scheduled on Wednesday, it will be the necrological service at St. Peter Panakan and the uh, burial at the Forest Lake Panakan. Let's continue to include them in the prayers. Let's greet those who are celebrating their birthday and wedding anniversary. If you are here present, please stand as we sing birthday and wedding anniversary song, including our deacon member, uh, Ma'am Tata, who is in, uh, in Kapatagan, Kapatagan Raman Tung Iyang picture. Ang Tata uh, Flores Olmogues, and our very active member of the choir, uh, Ma'am Rochelle Cagnete. Happy birthday po. Lahat ng mga nag-celebrate ng birthday and wedding anniversary, please stand as we sing birthday and wedding anniversary song. Once again, as from your birthday, the time is from Jesus he has you one more year happy time your birthday time is here having gift from Jesus he has given you one more year Lord bless you all in your celebration. Continue to guide and protect and provide. The Lord provides all your needs according to his riches and glory. Let's also include our, uh, in our prayer the um, mission and evangelism team as they travel to North Luzon uh, tomorrow and for the whole week, this week. The Lord bless you in your journey. Uh, with the Goye team of Pastor um, Romeo de la Mercen. Uh, regards sa mga Ilocano doon. And uh, Dios te agnina kanyayo in your journey. And talking of mission, uh, we thank initially the United Churchmen Choir with our choir director and Ma'am Army for... Uh, 
uh, leading the team yesterday at UCCP Tackle uh, Mission and Evangelism uh, training for the leaders. Uh, we'll be posting and announcing this officially next Sunday. So we'll gather more uh, information and details on this. Let us prepare ourselves as we come to the Lord in our worship celebration. please rise great and marvelous are your works Lord God Almighty just and true are your ways O King of the nations who will not fear you O Lord or glorify your name you alone are holy all the earth will come and worship before you for your righteous deeds have revealed for all to see hallelujah Christ is risen he is risen indeed. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we open our hearts and minds and spirit in worshiping you as we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. At this moment, we gather together as one, joining with all the Christians across the world in glorifying your name. Be with us, inspire us, and lead us in our time, Father, together. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord says in Colossians chapter 3, Paul said, Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits on the place of honor at God's right hand. So put to death the sinful and earthly things your king within you and have nothing to do with it. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of all of these sins. With the God with God's word and the invitation of St. Paul, let us come to God in silent prayer of confession as we acknowledge that we have sinned before God and sometimes go back to our old self. We ask him that he will forgive us as he is just and faithful and true and always to forgive us of our sins in Christ. Let us come in silent prayer. Paul said in Colossians, Think about the things of heaven, not the things on earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus, through the kindness and mercy of the Lord our God and his work on the cross and the power of his resurrection receive the assurance of the pardon of God and set your minds on things that are of heavenly and spiritual and put on the new creature, the new nature and be renewed as you learn Christ and become like him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thou hast promised 
to deceive us, poor and sinful though may be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and part to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. unite in prayer. Lord our God, we praise you and thank you. Our great shepherd, our Savior, for the reason Lord is alive and alive forevermore. He lives in our hearts as he is seated in the right hand of the Father but he is also among us, amidst us, as we gather in his name. And that you told us, Lord, that when we call upon you, you will hear us. When we knock, the door will be open. When we seek, we shall find. So, Lord, we come as a body of Jesus, bringing our thanksgiving and petitions. First, we thank you for the gift of life. You have extended it us, especially God, to those, our loved ones and friends, who celebrate their birthday and wedding anniversary. Continue, Lord, to work wonderfully in each of their lives. That they may experience God continually, your shepherding, your feeding, your anointing, your protection, your provision, your empowerment, even the power of the risen Lord. Continue, God, to grant the desires of their hearts in accordance to your perfect will. Bless their lives and their work, their studies, their family. Allow them, God, to be strong and firm in their faith in you. We come to you as well, Lord, as we remember those who need healing and restoration of our bodies, especially those who are sick now, left at home or in the hospital. Thank you, gracious Lord, that your powerful and healing hands can reach out to each one of them, and their families who are taking care of them, and for each one of us here, even those who are here, that come before you, Lord, that needs your healing power in the name of the risen Lord. God, our comforter, God, our consolation, we also bring to you, Lord, for your special comfort and touch to the bereaved families of Manatad, Montilio, and Tolon family for the passing on of their loved ones to a life with you in eternity. Yet in the reality of death, we know, Lord, that you understand us of our experience of grief and loss, human as we are. We pray, Lord, for your strength to be upon this family. As we remember their life and celebrate your goodness, especially Nanay Kora, to the family Tuliran and Manatad, and Nanay Viring Tolon. We 
who dedicated the best of her life in service to you as a prayer warrior and as a humble woman who spent her life in the church to be an encouragement to all whom he, she met, O oh Lord, the years that she had served us. Thank you for the wonderful life of 90 years. And thank you, Lord, we know 100% that she is with you. As strong as her faith in Christ Jesus, her Lord and Savior. Comfort, Lord, the whole family. And provide, Father, all their needs at this time. Loving Father, we continue, Lord, to ask for your empowerment and blessing as we minister to you through five program ministries in the remaining Sundays and the last month of May for this ecclesiastical year. Thank you for your sustaining power to all of us, your servants and leaders, teachers, preachers, pastors, volunteers, administrators, workers. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom to the members of the church council as they met again, Lord God, this afternoon for this regular meeting. Pour out your spirit upon them, Lord, and the wisdom and understanding that comes from you, that we may be able to see, Lord God, your work in the midst of your people and amidst the troubles of the world. And unite, O oh Lord, in attaining your will and your vision and mission for the church. As we offer all of these meetings, fellowships, and gatherings, Lord, in your name, including the scheduled meeting and retreats the young adults, young people, the UCM, the CWA, the choirs, and volunteers of different ministries to children and all others. Salamat, Father, for just making all things, Lord God, wonderful and fruitful as we do our best to contribute in the progress of your work here on earth as if we can really contribute, Lord. We acknowledge, Lord, that we are nothing without you. Or in fact, to say that who are we to contribute to your work? But somehow, God, you've given us this responsibility that as ordinary as we are, even in a very little way, Lord, you can use us, Father, in the building of your kingdom. Whatever you want to do, O oh Lord, of your kingdom, that you may use us, Lord, as your servants and workers in your vineyard. Thank you, Father. Lord, thank you for the uh, wonderful meeting and fellowship yesterday at UCCP Tackle continue to encourage us, Lord, in the work of mission, especially with the leadership of the United Church men. Salamat, Father, for your double anointing and empowerment. Looking forward for more of this in the next ecclesiastical year. Meanwhile, Lord, we pray for the mission and evangelism team with Pastor De La Merced as they travel to North Luzon tomorrow and the whole week for the mission trip. 
We pray, God, for your troubling mercy. We pray for the Holy Spirit to work in your wonderful way, Lord God, in reviving and training leaders of the church and the churches, Lord, that they will be going through and in reminding the Filipino people of the gospel of Jesus as the only source of salvation. And, Lord, for implanting in the hearts of every Filipino the missionary spirit and word. Father, thank you that we can offer all of this through Christ Jesus. Bless, Lord, everyone who are here, even our silent prayers, our petitions. Bless, Lord, our children in their studies, and those who will be taking exam, board exams. Thank you for your special favor to be upon them, Lord. Lord, this is our prayer. Christ Jesus, the risen Lord. Amen. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that He is with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I stand in reverence to God for his word. I'll be reading to you the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 to 10. And it says, After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Lord bless us for the meditation of his word. You may now be seated.
God be glo the glory. For indeed, worthy is the Lamb that was sh sh slain and is now risen victoriously from the grave. Our Jesus Christ is alive forevermore. And because Jesus is alive, our church is alive. Our faith is alive. And our service is alive. Nothing we do is in vain. Because the one we serve is alive. Glory be to him. This morning, we will be meditating all about the women who, are, who were the first witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We know that in a patriarchal culture, women have no voice. They are not being heard. Their opinion does not matter. They have no right. In some instances, they are not named. They are not heard. They are not counted. But all this have changed in the time of Jesus. Women today can speak without the accompaniment of a man, share news, share the gospel and information in public, and testify in court, or even the judge in court. And this has all changed because of Jesus. We can see how women played a big role in the life and ministry of Jesus. He, value, he valued them, treated women with dignity and respect, and called them his friends and followers. He sat with women, ate with them, taught and prayed for them. He healed women and forgave their sins. Think about his in encounters with women, the, Sap the Samaritan woman, Mary and Martha, Mary Magdalene, the woman caught in adultery, ready to be stoned to death. And not to mention the countless widows, mothers, and orphans who remain nameless in Scripture. If we take a look at the resurrection of Jesus, we, we can see that the first to have known of his resurrection were women. In including women as an integral part of the resurrection story, Jesus gave them the highest honor. During the time of Christ, among both the Jews and the Romans, the testimony of women did not count for much. As I have mentioned earlier, they could not even testify in court. So, what do you maka stand sa korte nga magigamiton nga witnesses? It really is very surprising that Jesus made his first resurrection appearance to women. Matingala ta nga nung to women. So, it is very interesting to note that many of the women present at Jesus' Jesus's crucifixion were also the women who woke up early. The, the next day after Sabbath to care for Jesus' body and went to visit the tomb of Jesus. If we look into the four Gospels, in Matthew, it mentioned Mary and the other Martha and the other Mary, I mean. In Mark, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Salome. And in Luke, it mentioned Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. And in John, uh, Mary Magdalene and the other women. So they had been ministering to Jesus. They had been the followers of Jesus. They had been women disciples of Jesus. Unya kay babayi managi sila, kwa sila gi appeal no, sa dosi ka mga disciples. They were just believers of the Lord Jesus Christ and they were his followers. Everywhere he went, the, these women were with him, supporting the ministry. And so this means that they have already been very supportive of Jesus 
during the three-year ministry of Jesus on earth. So they had been with him all through those uh, teachings of Jesus, all through those uh, doing of miracles, all those healing ministries, and many other things that Jesus did when he was on his three-year ministry and mission with them. This is taken from the Women of Resurrection by Nell Sonokjian. So when it is very common for the four Gospels, the mention of Mary Magdalene, that he was the first to see the risen Savior. Out of the all people who followed Jesus, it was Mary Magdalene who stand out in the list. Not his disciples. Matingala po tawai. Where are the 11 disciples at that time? The disciples at the time might still be in hiding for fear of their lives. One possibility why the disciples did not go to the tomb was because they were afraid of what the Jews might do to them if they were caught. Remember, at Jesus' betrayal and arrest, the disciples abandoned Jesus and ran for their lives. While Peter and John did follow Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest in John 18, 15, Peter denied the Lord three times out of fear of being arrested or associated with Jesus. Even on the day of the resurrection, the disciples remained in hiding. When Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection, the Bible states that on the evening of, the, of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. So the disciples were still in hiding even that day of resurrection. So when Jesus appeared to them, they were inside a room with a, the door locked. Therefore, it is possible that the 11 disciples did not go to the tomb because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Instead, they were focused on staying hidden as they grieved for Jesus' death. They were truly grieving. And even after the burial, Many family members are still, would still be grieving. That's why the church needs to visit them. We visit them and prayed for them. We know that at one point in the life of Mary Magdalene, why he was so uh, stand out in the mention of the four Gospels, she was seriously afflicted by demons. So he must have been very grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Nabisag asa mo adto si Jesus. He kept following him. And it is very remarkable how Mary Magdalene turned out to be a very committed and devoted woman of Jesus, follower of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we can learn from the life of these women who were the first witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. First is because of their love for Jesus. These women loved Jesus, and that is why they were the first ones at his tomb. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb while it was still dark. She was among the ones who went with the intention of anointing Jesus' body, Jesus' body, with spices. She was also present when Jesus was crucified on the cross. The women grieved when Jesus died, but when they saw him after his resurrection, they were filled with joy. Mary Magdalene and the other women teach us to love deeply and under all circumstances to be faithful to the Lord. According to the Old Testament law, it, if someone touch a dead body, they were declared unclean. So care of dead bodies was considered a woman's work. So ang mga embalmer, 
ato nga mga panahon were women. Unlike today, nga murag matingala po ta kung women ang embalmer karon. Because they will be declared unclean and touching the dead bodies are a wor work of a lowly considered lowly in the society. See, it should have been women. Women's work. I remember my experience as a young pastor before sa Kabukiran. I was called early in the morning to go to a house of a member nga namatay ang iyahang bana. And when I went there, it, mo pa lang yung pagsidlak sa adlaw na anak ko sa ilang balay. And ingon ang, ang asawa sa ako ah, Pastor, pika paragod akong bana, kuuta ragud iyang kutukuto. Imagine yung pakuuton ka sa kutukuto, no? Yan, naghigda na siya sa banig, nasa salog. Pakuuton ka sa kutukuto kay bas, kay init-init pa daw. So, ako po, yang at that, ha, muhi, inaguna-una ko ba, muhi, kap ko, murgahi naman yun siya. So, para lang i-comfort siya, and to minister to her, kay murag mo yun yung need at the time, bisag hadlok-hadlok unta to ikuot sa kutukuto. Ning kuot yun ko, kaya hamang yablihin ang t-shirt. So, anak ko, ti, gahi na yun yung kutukuto, te, anak ko, sa iya, ha. So, mura po yung doktor nga, declare o medically dead na ato nga time, kay bukid lagi. You know? so, so, I was unclean, kay nitouch ko sa patay. Last time also, uh, last um, Wednesday, we went to Nanay Bering. Gitawagan man me while well, we were on our way back there is a church. Nga uh, namatay. So we went there and, and prayed for the family you know, and committed the body of Nanay Bering to the Lord. So, at Nana. So they did not care. Uh, so in this case, the people did not care about the women that much. And the women also, they were, what, what nila gisapayan, that they went there to do the lowly job of putting spices on the body of Christ Jesus because of their love for Him. Because of their love for Him. And what po nila isapayan ang kahad look sa mga Roman guards who were there guarding at the tomb of Jesus. Nothing was going to stop them, the women, from taking care of their Savior. She did not abandon Jesus, or this is referring to Mary Magdalene, when he was crucified, or even when he died, she was still committed to him because of her love for Jesus. Ka ikaw daw ikast makast outan og seven demons sa imong body if you will not be that dedicated to the Lord or committed to the Lord. So we can learn a lot from this level of love and dedication of these women towards Jesus. That even when circumstances try to shake us, even when circumstances try to shake our faith, our love for the Lord, our commitment for the Lord will remain steadfast and firm and steady. What is the level of your love for the Lord now as you serve Him and you have breathed through the scriptures that our Redeemer lives and that He is alive forevermore? As we serve Him, is it just enough to sit and sing and pray? Are we not to take heed to the command of God through the angel to go quickly and tell the other disciples that Jesus had risen and tell other people that we serve a risen God. Second thing that we can learn from these women is their faithfulness in serving Jesus. Many of the women at the foot of the cross of Jesus when he was crucified, were the same women who showed up early Sunday morning after the Sabbath to care for Jesus' body. They remained faithful to the end. 
These women had faith which led them to be faithful. When Jesus traveled from town to town, teaching, doing miracles, and reaching out to people, these women followed him and were faithful until the time he died. They supported his ministry through their own means to make sure that every town, every city have heard about the gospel. They are the meek. They are the mech of the old times. Kung natay mech karon ang city church, they, these women are the mech of the old times because they make sure that every town heard about the gospel. For them to have followed Jesus wherever he went, they were faithful to him and believed in him and the work that he came to do. Like these women, we are to be faithful to Jesus and tell others about the world, about him. We ought to give ourselves to the work of the gospel until the day we die. So our faith, our service to the Lord is until the day we die. According to Mother Teresa, he said, she said, God has not called us to be successful. He called us to be faithful. God has not called us to be successful. Kay basig mga hambog na ta. But God called us to be faithful so that we would remain humble, knowing our limits, knowing our weaknesses, as, and our strength as we serve the Lord. The third thing that we can learn from these women is their close relationship with Jesus. When Mary Magdalene was crying at Jesus' tomb, he appeared to her and she was overjoyed. She went and told the other disciples that she had seen the risen Jesus. For Jesus to appear to her at the tomb means that she had a close relationship with him because of being part of his ministry. He had delivered her of seven demons before his crucifixion. As someone who has experienced deliverance, certainly that experience drew her close to Jesus. Just like we are, because we have we are recipients of God's grace. We are recipients of God's forgiveness. This has brought us, this will bring us closer to our Savior. That everything about our lives, we always call unto Him that He will lead the way for us. Jesus longs to have an intimate relationship with each of us. Jesus longs to have a very close relationship with every one of us. Dili lang nga kasi bata pero murag God seem very distant nga si Jesus murag distant kaayo ang ang Holy Spirit distant kaayo layo kaayo murag di makabot. And as we go deeper into our relationship with the Lord Jesus and into our faith we become closer to the Lord. To have an intimate relationship with God, we have to spend time with Him daily and get into His Word. We should always have the appetite to read His Word and to consult God's Word from time to time, especially in times of decision-making and in times when we are confused and in times when we are so down and challenge. This is sometimes hard during our busy days. Usahay mo yun, tadi na ko ka ampo, di na kabasa, kay busy ka ayo. But if we truly want to grow in our relationship, we want to really draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to make it a priority. Bible reading, prayer, and meditation of His Word should be we, we, we need to make it a priority because definitely we do not have time 
to the things that are not our priority. Kung di ni mo priority ang pagsimba, wa yud ka diri ron. Naadyo ka somewhere else. Kung dili ni mo priority ang ang ginuo, di ra yud ta mga pi, di ra yud nato na balihon ng mga Bible study and many other equipping works of the church. But if we make it a priority, we always make time for what we think are our priority. Another thing that we can learn from these women is that they gave support to the work of the ministry. The women who were at Jesus' tomb used their own personal resources. They understood that those who traveled with Jesus needed food, shelter, among other things. These are not detailed in the scriptures, but we, if we try to look into what we, they were doing as they were ministering and doing mission, this could have been looked into also. They gave from the resources they had and ensured that everyone was comfortable. When they went to the tomb, they had prepared spices and anoint, anointments for Jesus' body. And if Re reading John 19, we can see that Nicodemus has also already used 75 pounds of mare and aloe, yet they still went to give their share. This is a beautiful picture of giving. This is a beautiful picture of sacrifice. This is a beautiful picture of devotion towards Jesus. In the same way, we can give our time our life, our resources to the Lord in the ministry today. Many ministries give to the poor. Yes, we give to the victims of fire. We give to the victims of flood and other calamities around us. We, some churches send, and even our church send missionaries to other countries, build churches and schools, and they need finances for that. And we have projects also in the church, and we are encouraged to support that. But even beyond financial giving, God wants us to give of ourselves to him, just like the women. When they prepared those spices, they didn't hire someone to go anoint Jesus for them. They went themselves, knowing that it would be a hard task and yet they do it for their for their support of Jesus sometimes the greatest resource we can give is ourselves our time our energy our strength we can give as the Lord has blessed us so when God blesses us the message is for us to bless the ministry of God. He gives us an abundance so that we can bless others with the extra that we have. The women who followed Jesus were glad to support his work, and we should have the same gladness of heart as we give in all ways that we can to help the ministry. And the fifth is their devotion and their loyalty to Jesus. Although not regarded or recognized by society, kaminosan jud sila. These women were favored by Jesus and they knew it. They felt it. No man had ever talked to them as he did or valued them as Jesus did. And they were completely devoted to him because the way he treated them. Because of the way he treated them. These women were loyal to Jesus and, and were always at his side. Even at the very end when they were going to anoint his body. We can imagine the challenges that Jesus faced as he moved from town to town. Some people insulted him and made the many other persecutions that he experienced. Through all this, the women with him never walked away. Even when many of these disciples walk away, these women closest to him did not. 
our relationship with Jesus should not be affected by the circumstances we face or those who have left the faith. We should continue to be loyal to Jesus no matter what we face in life. When we are loyal to Jesus, we can grow in our faith in Him and be His witnesses on earth of the wonderful things that He has done for us, of how He has proven Himself victorious over the grave, and that He conquered the grave by rising back to life. A very learned man once said to a very little child who believed in the Lord Jesus, My poor little child, my poor little girl, you don't know whom you believe in. There have been many Christ. Naingon siya. Kinsa man yun ang Christ na imong gituuhan. There have been many Christ. Ingon ang tao sa usa ka bata nga nagatuo sa Ginoo. And the child said, I know which one I believe. Kay daghan mang Kristo. Ingon ang tao, daghan mang Kristo. Nay Kristo sa sabungan, nay Kristo wherever, no? So ingon siya, which uh, there have been many Christ. In which of them do you believe? And the little girl said, I know which one I believe. I know which one I believe in. I believe in the Christ who rose from the dead. So even a child was able to articulate his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ when asked. And remember this, that the command of God through the angel in verse 7 is for the women to go quickly and tell the disciples so the women hurried away from the tomb af afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell the disciples it is with a sense of urgency that those women took heed to the command of God through the angel to go quickly and tell others that Jesus Christ has risen. He conquered death by rising back to life. With Jesus' resurrection, we are assured that our faith, our service, our commitment, and everything that we do is not in vain in the Lord because we serve a living God. In uh, Asoka, once emperor of India, distributed Buddha's ashes in small portions to 84,000 shrines all over India. Buddhism is centered around the worship of the ashes of the dead founder. Imagine yung ashes, gamay rabi yun ang usaka tao, gamay rabi yun ang ashes, no? isara ka garapun. No? Anya, small portion of it were distributed to 84,000 shrines all over India. And Buddhism is centered around the worship of the ashes of the dead founder. Christianity centers around the living Lord, the risen Savior. So Christianity, the resurrection of Jesus, made Christianity a living faith a living religion because we serve a living God, a risen Savior. How about us? What is our level of love, commitment, loyalty, faithfulness, and support to the ministry that we have in Jesus Christ at this time? Knowing that the one we serve is the risen Savior and the one to whom we believe is a living God. This is the time to take a serious look at our relationship with the Lord Jesus, to take a serious look at our membership in the church, to take a serious look at our commitment, our individual commitment to the risen Savior. May we find joy in serving our living God. Amen. Responding to God's word, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, 
and whoever sow bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us prepare our tithes, pledges, and other offerings. Lamb of 
gracious God, accept these offerings as the fruit of our labor to be used in your service and expanding the mission, ministry, as well as reaching to those who are in need. And all this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are here to refresh our commitment to Him, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. As Paul says that in Christ there is no Jew or Greek, neither male nor female. By that, Jesus, with Jesus, there is no, in Jesus there is no discrimination, there is no prejudice, there is no bias. So all of us can proclaim the, the gospel of salvation and the good news of resurrection of Jesus. Children, men, and women alike, we are, we are commanded to do it in the name of Christ. So like Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Salome, and Mary, the other Mary, we can be Jesus' ardent followers and tell everyone we meet the best news we have ever heard that Jesus is risen. So by the power of God, let us go about telling, pe telling people about the gospel of salvation and the good news of resurrection of the Lord Jesus. As we sing our last hymn, the day of resurrection. Glorious and risen Lord, we come before you, Lord, in your presence to praise you, to honor you, to glorify you, Lord, for the victory over death. 
and for fulfilling the very purpose to which you came to earth, Lord, to save us and to secure us eternal life and the blessed hope of resurrection even when we die. Thank you, Father God, for indeed you are a great God and you love us so much that you provide us with everything that we need. Lowly as we are, sinful as we are, you serve us ultimately, Lord, because of your love, because of your, the abundance of your grace, Lord, for all your children. And for that, we are so grateful, O oh Lord. So we pray, Father in heaven, that you would continue to empower us and anoint us with your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, that we'll be able to respond to you, Lord, with gratitude in our hearts, Lord, for how you have been so good and faithful to each and every one of us. We also pray, Father God, that you will empower us to love you more, to be faithful to you, to be devoted and committed to your calling and to your command of going quickly to the ends of the earth and even inside our homes in the neighborhood to tell the good news of salvation and resurrection. We thank you, Father in heaven, that today we will go out from this place with hearts full of joy for the blessed assurance that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, listen to the thanksgiving, prayers, supplications, and intercessions of your children standing and kneeling before you. Thank you that you would honor our hearts, O Lord, as we come to you in humility and with all sincerity of hearts, bringing to you our longings, our thanksgiving, our praises, and our giving you glory, Lord. We thank you, Father in heaven, for indeed you are a great God. And our faith and our service is truly not in vain because we serve the risen Savior. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done to all of us. And now, children of God, go out into the world in the joy and peace of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Care for his redeemed cre creation. Follow him as children of the light. Make disciples by your life and words and glorify him by your dedication and love. So may he bless you with his gift of the Holy Spirit and be with you until his kingdom comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.